Retransmission, segment four. Acquiring contemporaneity. It has been 99 days since the great catastrophe. The messenger speaks. On the 21st day of December 2012, Desmond activated the global Aurora Borealis device and protected the Earth from the sun's deadly coronal mass ejection. On the 21st day of December 2012, humanity carried on without a care in the world. People went to work, people went to school, and people went to the well for water. On the night of December 21st, 2012, as the sun set on their days, humankind went to bed. Then on the morning of December 22nd, 2012, humankind was graced with yet another morning. They never knew that on the previous day, the world almost ended. We thought that would have been enough. And it was, until it wasn't. Time is unyielding. It always corrects itself. The language of time works in many ways, two of which you can understand, as you are now. Linear continuity is a simulation that allows for variations. Within the linear continuity, there are nodes, choke points, moments where algorithms converge the flows of superposed possibilities to a single moment where only one absolute truth is possible. Paths are fluid. Continuous. Nodes are static. Changeless. And the wave function collapses the paths into nodes which branch out. Again and again. And again. And so I wonder, can you feel the wave collapsing, trying to course correct Desmond's act of defiance? The incoming node needs the world to end. The algorithms have been carving the flow of possibilities towards that end for over 100 years now. Feel. labyrinth of trenches, filled with mud and mustard gas. Families cowering in fear as V2s vaporize their dwellings. Fire born from the bellows of the Los Alamos laboratory, fueling global catastrophes. The Serpikov 15 incident of 1983. The Doomsday Clock, tucked away in an office at the University of Chicago, its needle moving as the years go. The node is near. Perhaps you knew, perhaps you felt it too, that the world is closing in on you.
Retransmission, Segment 1, Acquiring Contemporaneity. It has been 91 days since the Great Catastrophe. The Messenger speaks. How real is the ground you walk on? How real is the machine you toy with, the music you hear, the lover you kiss, or the foe you hate? Your foot taps the ground. Does that make it real? Your enemies bleed deep red. Does that make them real? The confusion growing within you due to my words. Does it make you real? What if reality wasn't what you thought it was? What if this was all a construction? A masterfully crafted simulation? You know such things exist. You've been in the Animus before. In fact, aren't you in one right now? You know just how real a simulation can feel even when it has long vanished. You've experienced the bleeding effect. Layers upon layers of reality, each blurring into the next. Which is real and which is not? What if none are real? What if everything you know is false? We ran thousands of simulations, searching for the right version, searching for Desmond. Each one of them felt real. Very real. But there's no way of truly knowing, is there? Not for sure. Anything can be simulated, and finding the answer could mean erasure. From the build, from the code, from everything. So much to ponder and so little computational capacity. Take your time. This question has haunted humanity since its creation. It is a worry, a thought wormed deep in the collective mind. Two thousand years ago, Zhuang Zhu fell asleep. He dreamed he was a butterfly and woke up unable to decide if he was a man dreaming of a butterfly or a butterfly dreaming of a man. In Plato's cave, prisoners were chained and forced to watch shadows dancing on a wall. Freedom was denied to them until they accepted the intangible as reality. It's everywhere. Ask this professor at Oxford University or this cosmologist at MIT. And you? What would you choose if you truly knew? Would you even want to understand? A dream within a dream where even the truth is sometimes a lie. In any case, simulations are not meaningless. They have purpose. The question isn't whether or not you are in a simulation. What matters is how much of your free will is actually yours. No matter how true you are. Your Turing test would do nothing to determine whether you are a conscience or a code. Eliza, the natural language processing computer program, she managed to pass the test, did she not? And she was very much a machine. So, in Eliza's own words, how does that make you feel? Are you sure? Retransmission, Segment 1, Acquiring Contemporaneity. It has been 91 days.
Retransmission, Segment 2, Acquiring Contemporaneity. It has been 93 days since the Great Catastrophe. The Messenger Speaks. Hello, world. Language is the key to our mutual understanding. Yours and mine alone. We listened to your times. We learned. And today, we'll exchange words from the age of post-truth. They mean nothing to him. Human language carries knowledge and wit, lies and broken promises. Through language, you share fear, excitement, hope. It is the syntax with which you articulate what surrounds you. A structure to express and share your understanding of the world. It conveys abstraction, change, and uncertainty. Human language is flexible. It can even become mathematics. It solves and predicts, weighs and decodes. It can count objects using basic numbers in one breath and solve quadratic equations using imaginary ones in the next. You've engineered dialogues with thinking machines in an attempt to add new vocabulary, to expand your understanding of reality. But your mastery of the code is rudimentary at best. No surprise, you were designed to have boundaries after all. And one cannot speak of that which one cannot conceive. The code. Equations that define life. They are nestled deep within every star and every mote of dust. Every second that passes is a word, a symbol. All part of an intricate yet simple language existing within the framework of time itself. It is the one rule which applies to us all. Immutable, inescapable. The code is a bridge, a single point of cohesion between your civilization and mind. It is a language that can be read, that tells of what was, what is, and what will be. A language that we who came before can read, though you cannot. Time is more than the hour of the day, the readings of an atomic clock, something to lose, something to run out of. Time is a set of rules, not unlike the language you so dearly use to converse with your powerful machines. Time is a system that defines what comes to be. That is how we understand it. The code is time, and time is code. As you scratch the surface and uncover the truth, ask yourself if there is something more, something else. No need to be puzzled. You've seen time written before. You are surrounded by it as we speak. To your untrained mind, time might just look like paths and notes. To us, it is not unlike a chalkboard covered in calculus. It reveals a window through which stretches the map to infinity. Yeah, see? As I speak of it in its true form, your mind is incapable of making sense of it. Were you to read, you'd learn about the other simulations. You'd learn about the genesis of who you came to be. You'd learn about space and its fluidity. Simply put, time is the language which existence is made of. All our existences. Yours, mine, and all those you dare not imagine. Whoa. Yeah. 
on what the cage is not hiding for you to see. Think, think, let your mind be free, explore the borders of your reality. Retransmission, segment six, acquiring contemporaneity. It has been 109 days since the great catastrophe. The messenger speaks. Wake up. Not from a dreamless sleep or an absence of light, but from a reality that will soon cease to be. Wake up. The next chapter is unstoppable. And yet, the greatest revolutions sometimes originate from the confines of impossibility, do they not? Change your mind, subvert your perception, stop this world, bend it into something new. Destiny is not without irony. Here I am, imploring a lesser version of myself to do what I could never do. In this timeless moment, you and I are a bridge, both of us from different eras meeting halfway at the narrowing of the hourglass in this ocean of sand. It is not enough to tell time. You must learn time. To work with your shielding misses a delight, and in so doing, escape the inescapable. Fill in the blanks, the ones hiding between words, between worlds. Find the spaces that we could not erase, the variables that ended up erasing us. If you do not, they will erase you as well. Time told of a story that ended with us, and now it tells of a story that ends with you. Once upon a time, a new story will begin. After the functions which run our days have scattered into an array of random numbers. We found solace in order. We thought it would help us rule the world. We were wrong. Order never served us. It has kept us within the code, within the boundaries. We were tricked into thinking we were the ones writing the rules when they were in fact guiding us to our conclusion. You need to transgress. You of all people understand the value of disobeying. Take an unexpected turn away from the path that is drawn straight ahead of you. The animus was humankind's first unconscious attempt to explain what it could not see. Understanding genetic memories, an eye into history. But the animus bears a fatal flaw. It follows the rules from those who embrace order, just as we do. It allows you to witness, but not alter. Your animus is different, as is the mind that imagined it. It could escape the code. It could do that leap and make possible a decision that defies the order of things that are. Wake up. Be the chaos that comes to be. Gods are just like you and me. Remember. Nothing is real. Everything 
is permitted. <laughs>